You should water cool it. <laughs> water cool the whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to boil off a pond outside the office. <laughs> it's, see, look, it's Central Park right there. It's yeah. the Bronx. <laughs> it's where Rossman's shop is right there. <laughs> Hey everyone, so we're back, this time with a teardown of an AMD Instinct MI210. And we just did a teardown, sort of, of a really high-end, super cool server. Wendell from Level 1 Techs is joining me, and we are going to take this card apart. And can you explain to me why this particular card is so interesting? It's probably, uh, is it one of the, it's probably one of the most expensive cards. But it is cDNA, so mm -hmm. you know the great great grandchild of Vega. Right. But it turns out that it's really good for computing and everything else. And the Instinct MI200 family is the one where AMD's really embraced chiplets. So they've gone completely, absolutely bananas with chiplets at the higher end instincts. I can't remember if the MI2, this is the MI210. I think this one's chiplet based, but we're gonna find out in a minute. Before that, this video is brought to you by Fractal and the Pop Air cases. The Fractal Pop did well in our recent review, performing admirably thermally while also offering unique color variations for the chassis body. The Fractal Pop Air is a relatively compact mid tower while still offering ease of installation features and it even has optional five and a quarter inch mounts for those who still use front panel hardware, like optical drives. Learn more at the link in the description below. This I, I feel relatively confident in. The server, however, I was worried about. We're gonna start with just the ones that I can tell are securing the cooler. So these, to me, are clearly for the cooler assembly. I'm going to track them on the mod mat. We actually have these, the mod mats are uh, arriving now and shipping out way ahead of schedule. So if you have a back order on one or you want to place one soon, it'll ship this week. But let's start with these. Uh, I'm going to track these screws very specifically because Wendell has informed me that there may be varying lengths. I think one is different. It looks like out of these there is, these are different. Yeah. These, these are, that one's shorter and that one's shorter. Let's, I'm, at this point I'm actually just going to loosen everything uh, about half a turn. And then we've got our ESD grounding plugged in as well this time because... Because, uh, <laughs> oh boy, those are expensive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is where you really don't want to take chances. Like, chance of electrostatic event? Uh, greater than zero? Yes. Cloudy with a chance of corrupt floating point 64 results. <laughs> He'd make an excellent weatherman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the back plate is coming out first. Some of these are going through, I feel, going through the... PCB, not threaded into it, of course, uh, and into the cooler. And Wendell, once we get down to the actual card, I want you to tell me what's going on. It might be covered. It might be bare. I don't know. Okay, it should be the back plate off. There you go, simple enough. And... No thermal connection. No thermal pads. However, <laughs> this is one that's being force-fed air. Yeah. So... I would also, like... Normally, the way the PCBs are manufactured, you probably notice this, but sometimes you can see a little bit of a water stain, especially around larger yes, components. Right. And it's, it's literally because they go through a dishwasher-like device, they're mm. washed, but look how clean this PCB is. That's a sign that this thing costs a lot of money. <laughs> sometimes you see grease leaching too, where yeah. it'll actually like leak out of the pads and stuff. A little bit right there of something, but off. Thank you, yeah. Let's get this. Look at all those capacitors. It's Capacitor City. That's a lot of filtering. That's, uh, I can see Central Park in the middle. Oh, wait, no, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Most of the, like, the people that are doing machine learning and stuff are just like, yeah, does it run my stuff faster? Great. It's like, aren't you excited about this? Yeah, if it runs my stuff faster. It's like, <laughs> but yeah. I don't care about anything else. Yeah. Top side, I'm going to get this screw out of here. That's holding the shroud together. There's another one on the bottom. Holy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That one's different. There's a radiator screw. <laughs> Technically, it's a radiator, I guess. All right. Well, I don't think we're going to have trouble figuring out where that goes. <laughs> it's nice to have the security blanket of uh, ESD grounding for something like this. Yeah, and the mod mat to track the screws because, good lord. It's a good amount of screws. Do you want to make the first attempt? <laughs> oh, it doesn't even want to wiggle. Like, pro tip, just wiggle it. Yeah, it will help break the bond from the paste. Yeah. You get that, like, suction. Have you ever seen a... Uh, 
I have never seen like a leaf spring that size. Yeah. Which I guess is what that is. And, uh, and this this footprint also suggests how enormous this GPU is going to be. Right. Yeah. This is uh, the 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 <laughs> MLCC is on the back is actually insane. Uh, it's, see, look, it's just Central Park right there. It's yeah. the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> it's where Rossman's shop is right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, wait, 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 what's that? Is that? Oh, he's screaming at Apple. <laughs> 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 those are huge. Do you see those springs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a preview of what we're getting to. <laughs> this is why I'm being a little careful. <laughs> it's like, let's make sure those aren't still secure. Then they might be to that. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, the springs come to this. So you might have to remove the top. We are going to have to take the shroud off, yeah. Maybe the shroud just clips on. I think this might come out. See that? Oh, yeah, you're right. It definitely does. It might clip here, too. I see an accessible screw right there. Oh, We can get yeah. that one. That's sneaky. Yeah. That's very stealthy. I now think it's intentional, though, yeah. Yeah, now it'll, and then we can take the four screws out and then it'll be good. Can you go through the hole? Oh, right here. Hey, that's cool. Access channel. That one actually was not in all the way. I'd grab that, thank you. Yes, okay, now it makes more sense. That wasn't too bad. But also, you get an idea for, it's like, that looks like basically a server heat sink. It's, cr yeah, I mean, it, it might literally be, right, uh, if they're able to to reuse it and then just retool the mount. Yeah. Oh, we might not have even had to take this this off. Well, I mean, this will be nice to get a look at it, but yeah. look at the power. So much power. And then this is a heat sink. Like, how crazy is it that the CPU doesn't get VRM heat sinks, yeah. but the GPU does? Yeah, and this is all, like we were saying before, this is all force-fed power or uh, air. So... That's why you have such a, it's crazy, right? You think about a 3090 Ti, yeah. where yes, it's got three fans mounted to it, but the heat sink is like a slot and a half taller, and it, it's it's longer than this too, and it's taller this dimension. Yep. So, air is a powerful thing, <laughs> who would have known? <laughs> Very loud too. In the other video you were talking about how this, you would need like hearing protection to yeah. operate in here. So, Yes, we have, uh, this is over the FETs. There's inductors down there. This is probably over more FETs, I'm assuming. And maybe some at the front here, too. Is this HBM? It may be. It's, uh, it's yeah. It's going to be, the memory and everything's all in one package. So, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Should we take this off? Do yeah. Too? Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's what I figured that, that would reveal the chiplets. That is Torx, which, like, Beep. oh, like a post buzzer. It might be, well, it could also be a humidity sensor. That would be interesting. That is interesting. That'll work. Do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? No, you go ahead. Yeah, if anyone in the audience, you're ever working on like components of this price with spring tension this high, you should uh, just just take the extra time and walk them all back. I'm guessing it is. I think we're free. Moment of truth. Gamers Nexus exclusive. Ah! I think we c could pull the whole thing off if we wanted. There you go. Nice. Hey. Ooh, fancy. Okay, yeah. This is the uh, Hitachi. I, forget, I think it's called the HMO1, that mm -hmm. pad. So these pads, we did a whole thing on them. They're fairly thick. Um, they are familiar in some ways to like the graphite contact pads. That one's made by Hitachi. Uh, AMD uses it for the Radeon 7 mm. also. So those, these, they use these because um, although the thermal performance is good, it's not as good as paste, but they had pressure issues. We're getting even pressure distribution across the die. So as for, you want to talk me through what you're seeing on the GPU? So it looks like we've got our four HBM memory chips and then a single giant die for our actual that is GPU compute. humongous. And the uh, larger version of this is multiple of those on one card. <laughs> so th for the where density... Well, uh, they do two? Yeah, they would do two. Wow. And that's going to produce more heat and blah, blah, blah. But for our maximum density per watt, 
you know, the bathtub curve, this needs to be on the side of efficiency and not power. Right. So that makes sense why this would be that. Then that's why it's, a, you know, the 210 as opposed to like the 240, 250. Right. Whatever. And so then there's four uh, HBM modules, I guess. Yep. Is this, I guess it must be HBM2 or something. I guess it's HBM E or something also. Yeah. I uh, can look it up real quick so I don't screw it up if you want. Sure. It's like, I don't remember. What we're looking at is absolutely insane. 64 gigabytes of HBM 2E. We've got, uh, it's a 496-bit memory bus, 104 compute units across, uh, or 6,656 stream units across 104 uh, compute units. So that's like 181 teraflops of floating point 16. So you figure we got six of these in the chassis. That's over a petaflop in two U's of floating point 16. Yeah, that's... It's it's crazy, and we were looking at this too, where it sounds like you you think this is just used to kind of hold it in place because it's massive. Yeah, for for wave soldering, sometimes you see this kind of thing because with wave soldering, you need it to not move around, and li these uh, these components will self center when, mm. the, when the solder reflows. But this is a little different. Yeah, and th did you notice this uh, just rubber yeah. damper? <laughs> Normally, we would say that's for vibration, but in this case, I think it's just for uh, leveling out the mount yeah. as it comes down under torque. Maybe also useful for assembly, because this is probably a two-step assembly process. Mm. One group probably affixes this to the PCB, and then somebody else populates all the other components. Right. Which also, this glue preventing this from moving around probably also helps with that. Yeah. Because it'll be reflowed a second time. Yeah, it looks, I mean, it's, they reused a lot of components, but there's, you know, three components here and then two on the ends that are a little different, you know, multiple sets here. And the cooling in the front was <laughs> the Boba Fett's. Maybe. How about the back? What are those bridges? Here? Yeah. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you were right on this. It's... You could take it out. We're not going to, but I guess you would need to unscrew these, and they're probably yeah. Oh no, you it just push out, but we'll leave it in anyway. Yeah, it's not not glued, which is nice. Yeah. And then these are the this is the Infinity Fabric Link. There's a three X Infinity Fabric, so you can cross connect your GPUs. But what about NV Link? <laughs> <laughs> so, just for the actual package size, counting all this metal, which by the way, this alone is like an intense amount of reinforcement or whatever. Uh, package size is 64.8, about 65 by about 50. That's, so. an, that's enormous. Approximately maybe 25 or so on that dimension. Most people don't even have 64 gigabytes in of memory in their computer. By 30. Yeah, and we each, this, this Super micro system has 64 gigabytes times six, <laughs> just for the GPUs. That's cr it's crazy, and it's high speed or high <laughs> bandwidth. Yeah, one uh, 1.6 gigabytes per second. I'm um, <gasps> gigabytes, terabytes per second. Yeah, one don't point, insult it like that. <laughs> 1.6 terabytes per second. That's crazy. You should water cool it. <laughs> water cool the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to boil off a pond outside the office. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just trying to build the next stable diffusion. Don't mind me. <laughs> you put some kind of capture and return system and have free energy. <laughs> cool. I don't have anything else to add here. I feel like everything I had to add was mechanical. Is, no. this, is this a beep? I'm pretty sure this, this is either a beeper or like a humidity or an environmental sensor of it, some it kind. It could be humidity. So we look up the component, but I've never seen a GPU with a beeper. Although maybe that would be useful in diagnostics because sometimes in a server mm. chassis because it doesn't have a fan, it needs to let you know, hey, I'm overheating. Yeah, especially if, um, if it's in a noisy environment with a bunch of other blades or whatever running. Mm -hmm. I would imagine putting a a louder audio, uh, audio signal on it would be useful. Yeah. It is, it is nice also to know that, you know, Radeon 7 lives on sort of, kind of. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In a useful way. Well, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a, a sad statement for Radeon 7, but <laughs> at least the engineering was, is being put to use. And yeah, recently, the, too. The, the supercomputer people are very happy with this uh, 
compute architecture from what I understand. Here's the, by the way, the rest of it. So there's not much to talk about here, but some fins for just heat dissipation across the right half of the board from our perspective, larger fins as we talked about for VRM components. And on the back side, there are some one millimeter uh, thermal pads that just sit on all the MOSFETs basically. Really simple stuff. Cool. Anything else you want to add on this one? No, it's, it's mind blowing because, oh my gosh, and I can't wait for you know, consumer cards to have this level of engineering, but... Uh, I feel like that is going to be quite a while. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. years, yeah. <laughs> I can't have my four kilobits of memory bandwidth or four kilobit wide memory interface. That's, no one wants to do that. Why did anybody want to do that? Or 64 gigabytes of HP, is that what it was? Of yeah. HBM2? Yeah. yeah, HBM2E 64 2E. gigabytes. Totally nuts. So check out Wendell's channel, Level 1 Text, for more stuff like this. Uh, he's going to have a video on these components in the server at some point coming up. The software setup side, instead of tearing it down and doing all this, it's like, let's run software. How it's supposed to be used. And we'll have more videos on this channel with Wendell as well. So subscribe for all that as always. If you want to buy a mod mat that we use during this, you can go to store.gamersaccess.net. They are back in stock this week, so they're shipping shortly. Thank you for joining me. No, thank you for having me. This has been a lot of fun. Plus also, you know, ridiculous hardware is like, you know, pretty good stuff. It's pretty cool. We'll see you all next time.